Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's preaching time. Preaching. It's time for the word. It's time. Time for the word. If you would turn with me to Acts, the second chapter. Actually, the first chapter of Acts, the first fourth verse. Acts, the first chapter, the fourth verse. about you. I'm grateful to God. It's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. This is the day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into the church. Acts, the first chapter, fourth verse. Acts, the first chapter, the fourth verse. If anybody feels better already, just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I like to come to church where you can leave better than when you came in. Amen grateful to be able to feel better. <coughs> Acts, the first chapter, the fourth verse, reads as this, on one occasion while he was eating with them, this is Jesus, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now also Acts, the second chapter, the first verse. Acts, the second chapter, the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place suddenly. A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Brothers and my sisters, I want to share briefly in the sermonic moment a sermon subject, We Want More. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, We Want More. I'll turn to somebody else and say, We Want More. Come on, let us look to the Lord in the word of prayer. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this your moment. Now, God, in Jesus' name, I let nothing, God, keep your people from receiving what you have for to receive in this moment. We thank you, God. Send your power. Send the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We want more. Brothers and my sisters, there are a set of commercials that are out right now by AT&T um, that have just caught my attention. You have to excuse me, but some stuff is just funny to me. Uh, um, and AT&T has a set of commercials. Um, uh, they ask different questions to a group of children. Um, they ask them, um, um, whether bigger, um, what's better, bigger or smaller? And, and he asks the children, um, they, they want a bigger treehouse or a smaller treehouse. He, he asks them, what's better, doing um, two things at once or just one? Or what um, better is two better than one? Um, there's this is one commercial, he says, um, what's better? He asks the children, what's better, faster or slower? Um, and the children say, faster. And, 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 and so he says, well, wh he says, well, what are some things that are fast? They say, a cheetah is fast. Uh, well, what's some things that are slow? My grandmama is slow. He said, um, would, would you think your grandmama would like to be fast? Yeah, man, she would like to be fast. He said, well, maybe we can get some turbo charges for your grandmama. And, and he says, tape a cheetah to her back. I, mean, I think this, I'm talking about just, I mean, it's just, did these commercials just wear me? I mean, they just get me. The boy said, tape a cheetah to her back. Amen. I just went around for weeks, tape a cheetah to her back. Take a cheetah to her back. Amen. But, but, but it was this interesting thing because you've got this commercial that AT&T um, does, but there's this one um, that I, I really like. And when she asked him this question, um, who thinks? thinks um, more is better than less. And, and, and he asks um, these children who thinks more is better than less. And this little girl, this little girl goes on on this ramble. And she says, m m she says more is better than less because if there's more or less stuff, then you might want to have some more. However, your parents won't let you because there's only a little. If you really like something, you want more of it. We want more. We want more. Like you really want it. And you want more. Amen. Amen. And I've just been running around talking about we want more. We want more. And it's an interesting thing because when you think about it, if you think about it, more is better than less. Amen. And, and there are times in your life in which you have to get a sense of you want 
more. And, and on this Pentecost Sunday, what I realized in looking at this Pentecost scripture is the disciples had to understand that they wanted more. Uh, that Jesus had come, Jesus had died, Jesus had resurrected, but they had to understand uh, that where they were could not just stay right where they were, but they needed what? More. Oh, I'm talking the community of hope right now because we're at a place in which we say that we're 10 times better, uh, but we're 10 times better, but here is not what? There. Amen, somebody. Uh, I'm at a church in which we say we started from the bottom, but now we're here. Amen. But we're 10 times better, and we're headed over there. And so we need to understand that we want what? More. And so my brothers and my sisters, I've come by to let you know that along this Christian journey, sometimes you can get a divine discontent that causes you to seek to want more. Is there anybody in the house that knows what I'm talking about? Uh, that you want more, that your situation is not enough for you right now, that where you are used to be good enough for you, that what you're doing used to be good enough for you, that the status quo used to be cool for you, but right now there's something rumbling inside of you that says there's got to be more than this. Is there, is there anybody here that, that, that the way you are spiritually, it used to be all right, it used to be cool for you to come to church on a Sunday and, and, and hear somebody preaching all that kind of stuff, but right now you want to go deeper, you want to learn more more, you want to become more, you want to experience more, you want to see Jesus more. Is there anybody in the house today that that's your testimony that you can turn to somebody and say, we want what? More. Oh my God, Jesus. I, I've come to talk to somebody here today because here you have the disciples. I'm talking about that Jesus had just had his victory lap. Jesus had come down up off the cross. He had resurrected. Jesus was walking around with them. They're the only ones hanging out with him. I'm talking about the resurrected Jesus. You would think that they're about to think they've got it all going on, but Jesus tells Tells them uh, that, that, that I know that you think it's all about right now, but I need you to go to Jerusalem, Lord have mercy, and wait for the Holy Spirit because there is more. And one of the first things you've got to understand when you know that you want more is you need to know that more exists. Uh, turn to somebody and say, uh, you need to know that more is there for you. Uh, there is more. There. One of the challenges for many of us is that we don't understand that there is more than we have right now. That we think that what we have is what it is. Amen, somebody. We think that where we are um, is all that there is. But you need to understand there is much more to you than meets the eye. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's more to thee than this. Amen. There that there's more to me, uh, that you've got to understand that just because all you've had was dysfunctional relationship does not mean that that's the only kind of relationship, amen, somebody? And just because all you've had is heartbreak and heartache does not mean, but there is more than heartbreak and more than heartache. There is more than being broke all the time. Have I got a witness in the house today? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got to understand that there is more. And, and what Jesus had to let the disciples know is he had to let them know, no, I understand that you all want to move at this level, but there is more. The disciples sat and they talked to Jesus and Jesus said, look, I need y'all to go and wait for the Holy Spirit. And they said, what, when the Holy Spirit comes, is that when um, you're going to establish Jerusalem? Is that when Jerusalem is going to come? Is that when the Israelites are going to come into power? And he said, whoa, 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 I need you to understand. This ain't just about Jerusalem, but I'm going to send you to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. That y'all were looking at Jerusalem, Lord have mercy. But there is more, God have mercy. Y'all think, I came just for one piece of it, but I came to do so much more than you can ever believe, think, or imagine I'm trying to help somebody here today because you came here this Sunday just for the problem that you've got right now, but God's got more in store for you, that God wants to turn some things around you ain't even thought about just yet, that you worried about how to pay your bills, and God wants to give you a house, that God's got more in store for you, that you just worried about the little chicken head that didn't hurt your heart last night, but God wants to give you somebody that's going to treat you right for a lifetime. There's more in store for you. You worried about your little job right now, and God wants wants to give you a career. There's more, in, but you've got to know that more exists, and you've got to know that you deserve more. Turn to your neighbor and say, baby, I deserve more. I deserve more. I don't deserve to stay stuck where I am right now, but there's got to be more. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, in this. In you need to know that more exists. I ain't going to preach long. I'm going to roll through this, Reverend Bill. The second thing you've got to understand is that you've got to work for more in a season of less. Uh, you've got to work for more in a season of less. When you look at the scriptures in Luke, the 12th chapter, the 48th verse, um, it talks about the fact that to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, uh, and I've come to understand, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that I've come to understand that the key to success um, is not working at the level that you're at, but working at the level you want to go. Uh, okay, I, I just went over somebody's head. Let me help you here. Y you see, many of us, our challenge is that we do just enough for where we are. And we only work at the level for where we are. 
Uh, but the Bible says, what, to much is given, much is required. What I've come to understand is I take on a heavier responsibility, and then God can give me more. You see, I don't have to wait for God to give me to then get the responsibility. But sometimes I just step up my level of taking on responsibility, believing that God is going to then add to me at the level that I do my work. Oh, I, 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 I know. You see, y'all want everything to be handed to you. I understand. But is there anybody up in here that knows you got to work for some stuff when you don't got much stuff? Lord, have mercy. You got. Uh, let, let me help you here. Let me help you here. When you look at the disciples, the disciples are sitting there, and the Bible says they all go when they get together um, in the upper room. And they get together on one accord. They have a prayer meeting for days. I'm talking about they get together. Can you picture what it means to get about 70 folks together in one room and you sitting there praying and, and praying and trying to get on one accord and trying to, uh, I mean, you can't stand such and such or such and such. Get on your nerves sometimes. Amen. But, but you're working through all your stuff, forgiving all your stuff, and you're just sitting there praying because Jesus said for you to go and wait until the Holy Ghost comes. You don't know when the Holy Spirit going to come, but you just sit there and you're just going to work until it comes because they were working, God have mercy, in a situation even though they were in a situation of less, let me help you understand something. The disciples, Jesus had been killed. Jesus had been resurrected. But the religious leaders were out after them. And so they're sitting there. They're in hiding in this upper room. They're in a place. It's during the Pentecost season in which Jews are coming from all over the world. And so you have Jews from all over the world. They are this minority in the midst of a majority. They are a minority in the midst of a majority celebrating somebody who's supposed to be dead, celebrating somebody who was just assassinated in the midst of a situation of less, but still they work harder. God have mercy. Jesus. I'm trying to talk to somebody here because right now, while you don't have much, if you work hard, I believe that God can make a way. That right now, while you don't have much, if you just sit and labor before the Lord, I believe that God can open up a door. That right now, while you don't have much, I know you don't have a job, but you need to wake up every morning like you do have a job. I know you need to wake up, you need to go somewhere early and just sit around there and act like you're working. Have I got somebody that knows what I'm talking about? I'm talking about wake up and, and, and scour and, and, and and the employment section. And I, I know it don't seem like it's, it's hard to get a job, but if you're working, God will work it out for you. Have I got somebody in the house that knows what I'm talking about? I, I dare you, I dare you to work hard now, even when you don't have it, and watch God add it up unto you. But you've got to work. God have mercy. For more in a season of less, but the last thing you've got to do is you've got to rethink possible. Uh, I'll turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, rethink possible. Uh, the, the interesting thing for me, Reverend Bill, is I look at all of the ads for AT&T is at the end of the AT&T ads, they never say this, they never say this, but if you watch, they end up showing the AT&T logo and underneath it, it says, Rethink Possible. Uh, you see the tagline for this ad campaign, God have mercy, is Rethink Possible. Uh, they're asking these young people, what, what is better? Is more better? They're asking them. Is faster better? They're asking them. Um, is two better than one? And, and then at the end of the ad campaign, it says what? To Rethink Possible. Uh, because AT&T is trying to get you to be able to understand that with AT&T, uh, the possibilities aren't limitless. Uh, and that what you think is possible for you right now, God have mercy, uh, you've got to rethink what your own level of possibility is uh, with AT&T. Uh, now, I've got to let you know I'm not here to give an ad for AT&T. Uh, oh, but I've come by to let you know I'm here to give an ad for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and with the Holy Spirit, oh, God have mercy, uh, you can rethink possible. Uh, and you can look at your situation, uh, and you can look at your level of possibility, uh, and you can realize of what's possible right now when the Holy Spirit uh, steps up on the scene uh, then your situation uh, shifts a little bit uh, and you've got to rethink possible. Let me let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. You see, when I look at the disciples, uh, what, what I realize, Reverend Bowers, uh, is that when I look at the scope of Scripture, uh, I realize that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, was a retelling of what they called the Gospels. Uh, and in the Gospels, they were called the disciples uh, because they were the followers of Jesus. Uh, but when you look, God have mercy, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, Peter gets up and he says, uh, he gives a sermon, uh, and thousands get saved that day. Uh, and it's the beginning of what we call the birth of the church. But what I watched was, it was a reshifting, Lord have mercy, of the disciples in what they did and who they were. Because they went from becoming called disciples to be called apostles. Oh, God have mercy. Oh, that just went over somebody's head. You see, when the Holy Spirit came, it did not just redefine what they did.
did and redefined who they were. You see, they used to be disciples. They were followers of Christ. Now they were apostles, fathers of the church. Now they were the ones, Lord have mercy, that would take everything Jesus showed them and start to act on it. That's why they call it the book of the Acts of the Apostles. You see, the Gospels was when they learned the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the Acts of the Apostles was when the Holy Ghost came up in them and they started to work with what they had. But they had to rethink their possibility. And I've come by to talk to somebody today to know that there's more in store for you. And today God wants to redefine your possibility and change you from a disciple to an apostle. It's time for you to get to work. It's time for you to get to moving. It's time, Lord, have mercy. Lord, let me... Let me, we're going to do this a little differently today. We're going to do this a little differently today, Reverend Bill, once again, uh, because it's going to be a different kind of a church service. Is that all right for y'all? Uh, we're going to do it a little differently. God has to show us something. God has to, be, to teach you something. Uh, but God's going to do church a little abnormal today uh, because this isn't going to be just the regular disciples' church. It's going to be the apostles' church service. Amen, somebody? Is there anybody here you ready to get a, a promotion? Is there anybody here you ready for an upgrade? Is there anybody here you're ready for more? Uh, just turn to somebody and say, we want more. Uh, baby, I want more. Uh, you can sit there with what you got and be cool with it. Uh, but I can't be cool with where I am right now. Uh, but anybody here, you want more? Oh, I wish I had somebody could shout for more. I, I wish I had somebody you could declare to God, I want more, God. I, I want more of your power. I, I want more of your grace. I, I, I want more of your provision. I, I, I want more of your love. I, I want more of your peace. I want more of your joy. I want more of your power. We want more. We want more. We want more. We want, whew, oh, we want, we want more. And so my brothers and my sisters, my brothers and my sisters, one of the things I have to share with you, I have to share with you a word that was shared for this house, a word that was shared for Community of Hope um, um, on our seventh anniversary. On our seventh anniversary, we want to thank God on that Friday night, uh, Pastor Harold Hayes and Pastor Kelly Hayes came and shared words with us. Uh, but as they shared words with us, I gave Pastor Harold Hayes a call that Monday uh, just to thank him for the wonderful words they shared. He said, Pastor, um, the Lord gave me a word for Community of Hope when you were giving your remarks that night. Uh, but I thought it was it just out of order for me to come and to snatch the mic from you. And so I was praying that you would call me. He said, you called me this Monday morning, and I know that the Lord has this word for you. Now, now you've got to understand that Pastor Harold Hayes, I've known him. He's my big brother in ministry. And he has shared words with me about three different words um, over a 20-year period that still play true right now. So he's someone who I respect in the spirit. Amen, somebody, someone who I respect his judgment. And when he says the Lord has given a word, I really believe it's a word from the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Bill. really respect it as a word, amen? And, and, so, and so he shared this word with me, and he said, Pastor, the, when you were sitting there, the Lord showed me uh, that Community of Hope was about to go into a period of acceleration. He said, it's a period of acceleration, and what used to take seven years is not going to take seven months. What used to take seven months is going to take seven weeks. What used to take seven weeks is going to take seven days. What used to take seven days is going to take seven hours. What used to take seven hours is going to take seven minutes. And what used to take seven minutes is going to take seven seconds. A period of acceleration. He said, and so what you have to be able to do is to walk in this period of acceleration. Now, the interesting thing, my brothers and my sisters, and I want you to hear, is that this period of acceleration is not just for the corporate house, but this period of acceleration is also for your house. And I need you to hear that God is saying that in community of hope, while God is doing that for the body of believers together, that in your own house, that what used to take seven years will take seven months. What used to take seven months will take seven weeks. What used to take seven weeks will take seven days. What used to take seven days will take seven hours. What used to take seven hours will take seven minutes. And what used to take seven minutes will take seven seconds. I'm trying to help somebody here. I know that y'all want me to shout it, but I need to give the word because we are calling this a community of hope, the seven-year prophecy, amen? And this is the prophecy that was shared with us on our seven-year anniversary is saying that there's a period of acceleration in Community of Hope. Is there anybody here that when you heard that, it resonated with you and you received that for your life? Is there anybody here that you can believe that for your situation and your circumstance? I'm, I'm trying to talk to some people who want more, amen? Because I want you to show you something. You see, I heard that word and he gave me that word, but God did not give me the release to share that word with the house just yet on a Sunday morning. God gave me the release to share it on a Bible study a couple of weeks ago. 
I did not know why God would not give me the release to share it with the church on Sunday morning. But then I was praying last night, and God said, now is the time to share it because it's Pentecost Sunday, and it's time that I'm reshaping some things for some folks, and the Holy Spirit is going to be able to help them to walk in what I have for them during this season. And this is the season that they need to want what? More. Now, now, let me help you. Let me help you. You see, many of us would take that. Many of us would shout off. Some of us would be like, oh, he just talking out the side of his neck. But let me, is there anybody who you would dare believe that that could be possible for you? Uh, because when we're talking about rethinking possibility, amen, we're talking about the fact uh, that, that now there's going to be some, you're going to be like, no, that ain't for me. Okay, well, if it's not for you, cool, cool in the gang. That's wonderful. You can get the sermon topic from last week, amen. Give them the DVD on me, amen, somebody. But if you're here and you believe that that could connect with you, if you're here and you believe that God could be speaking a word to you through that. If you're here and you're believing that God can want more for you and it's seven years, what took seven years can take seven months and what took seven months can take seven weeks and what took seven weeks can take seven days and what took seven days can take seven hours and what took seven hours can take seven minutes and what took seven minutes can take seven seconds. And the thing I need you to be able to do is I need you to start to rethink the way you look at your life. Uh, because I need you to rethink the way you walk about your week. Because in this next seven days, you're going to need to walk this week a little differently than you did last week. Uh, because you walked last week in the old possibility, but you've got to walk this week in the new possibility. You, you, you see, you can't walk this week the way you used to walk last week because there will be opportunities this week that would not work the way opportunities worked last week. Have I got somebody that knows what I'm talking about? So every conversation you have, you need to sit and talk with the person and see what's on their mind. Because God may be putting the person beside you that's going to accelerate. Lord, have a turn to your neighbor and say, we want more. We want, we, we, we want more. We, we're talking. And you've got to understand. You've got to understand um, that, that, that there are times in which you've got to seize a moment. Amen? But in order to seize the moment, you've got to see the moment. And too many of us, we try to plan for a moment. But, but the truth be told, you can't always plan for a moment. Sometimes a moment is just in front of you. And many of us, our challenge is, is not that God does not want to bless us. is that we do not seize a moment when God puts it right in front of us. And so God will have it right in front of us, but we won't see it in order to seize it. But I'm talking to somebody here today that this this week, this week, I'm talking about this week, when you walk up out of this church, that you need to be looking with the eyes of possibility, the eyes of vision, and you need to see possibility everywhere you go. I'm talking about you need to see possibility everywhere you go. You need to be looking for God to be dropping the Holy Ghost hookup up out of heaven. You need to be looking for God to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. You need to be looking to see what God is about to do. You need to be, I don't care what they look like. If you're sitting by them on the bus, have a conversation with them. You don't know who they are. Uh, I, 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 I don't care if they white, black, uh, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. And, and you need to sit with them and see what they can sow into you. Lord, have mercy, somebody. Have I got a witness in the house today, somebody? And you need to be able to understand that God can use anybody in anything. And I don't care how bad the situation is. You need to know that even in the midst of a crisis, that God will use your crisis for your triumph. And you walk through a crisis, and you walk through it like it ain't no problem. And somebody's going to see how you handle hard times. And they're going to Bless you the good times. Have I got a witness in the house today that, that you need to be able to understand? You need to. So today we're going to have a, 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 a strategy session. Amen. Today we're going to have a strategy session. It's going to be a little different church. Amen. Usually we would shout it out and we would go home. Amen. Uh, but, but we're going to do it just a little different if y'all don't mind today. Is that all right? Um, what we're going to do, what we're going to do first, I need to make sure that whoever needs to get saved, gets saved. Amen. I need to make sure whoever needs to get saved, whoever needs a church home, gets saved and gets a church home. But then after that, we're going to take about a 10 minute moment, a 10 minute moment in which we're just going to give you time um, to sit and just chit chat with each other about what your strategy is for this week. Uh, what your strategy is for this week. What do you mean, Reverend, my strategy for this week? Well, you see, I can't tell you um, that, that there is something